Are you ready to clean up your photos? Well, today we'll learn how to remove anything in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, you can download this image from the link in the video description. In this video, I'll show you three different techniques for removing distractions from your photos. We'll start off with removing simple distractions and then move on to trickier areas so that you'll know how to solve common problems that you might run into. Let's start off easy by using the inpainting tool. I'm going to add a new pixel layer so that we can draw on top of that. Then I'll select the inpainting brush, which you can find over here. Just click on the little gray triangle. And then you can go down and select the inpainting brush tool. To use this tool properly, I'm going to come up to the context toolbar and change this option from current layer to current layer and below. This way, Affinity will use the information from the main layer to fill in where we paint. So let's start by inpainting the letters on the shirt. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to paint one letter at a time to remove these letters. You can see that that did a pretty nice job, but we have a couple of wrinkles that I don't like. If this happens, feel free to paint over an area more than one time to get the look that you want. The reason why I'm painting one letter at a time is to slowly remove each letter. If you paint too large of an area, it will bring in information from the surrounding area, like the pants or the arm, and it won't fill in the area properly. So just take your time and paint each individual letter. Now that I've finished with that painting, I can see that this area and this edge by the leg doesn't look very good. Let's use the clone brush to fix this. I'll grab the clone brush tool. And just like with the inpainting brush, I'll come up to the top and change it to current layer and below. To use the clone brush, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option. And when these crosshairs come up, I can click on an area to sample it. Then all I need to do is paint. And you can see that we're repeating this area down here and placing it up there. As I do this, I like to have my clone brush set to a nice low flow so that the areas blend together nicely. So now that I've brought that light area up, I want to bring some of the darker areas down. So I'll hold down Alt or Option to sample a new darker area. And then with a larger brush, I'm just going to lightly tap to bring some of that darkness down. I can see a little bit of lightness being repeated here, so I'm just going to make sure that that's cleaned up. And that looks pretty good. Let's repeat this process by cleaning up over here by the knee. I'll select some of the red shirt, and then I can begin painting right here, right close to the leg, to clean up that extra bit of letters that we're showing. And I'll do this up here as well. I'll also sample from the other direction, bringing some of the white from the pant leg and just filling in so that this knee looks nice and round. You can now see the before and after of removing those letters. This looks pretty good, but I do still see a little bit of smudginess there. So I can use my clone brush to clean up those areas as well. So I'll sample an area that has more texture and then I'll go ahead and paint some of that texture in. If you ever mess up, feel free to press Command or Control Z to undo some of your painting. 
And feel free to adjust the flow of your paintbrush as you go to get even more light blending. All right, at this point, I think this looks really good. So that's the first technique, using the in-painting brush, then using the clone brush to fix any areas that you might have missed. Next, let's do a trickier example using only the clone brush. To start, I'm going to add another new pixel layer. Then I'm going to come down here to where we have some paint on the street. I want to use the clone brush on the yellow paint. This area is very large, and I don't think that the in-painting brush would do a very good job. Not only is this area too large, but we also have a shadow in this area that's coming from the street onto the yellow paint. I'd like to have a bit more control as I remove the paint in that area. So I think the clone brush will be perfect for this. I'll hold down Alt or Option and I'll sample some of the dark shadow area on the road. Then I'll go ahead and paint to fill in some of this asphalt over the yellow paint. Now, when you work with an area this large, it's a good idea to sample lots of different areas and bring them inward toward the center. So I just sampled from this side and brought it in. I'll do the same on the other side, sampling an area over there and then bringing it inward. By collecting multiple sample points, you'll be able to blend the different colors and textures together to make this look a lot more natural. As you get close to the edge, you'll start to get areas that look like this, so this would be a good time to sample another sample point. For this light area that's not in the shadow, I'll go ahead and sample a light area of the asphalt and paint that over. If I turn this off, you can see that the light area continues for quite a distance over here. I want to retain that shadow, but I painted over that area so it's hard for me to see where to paint this light asphalt. To fix that, I'm going to use the eraser tool. And I'm going to make my eraser larger. And then I'm just going to erase what I painted. And now I can clearly see the edge of the shadow. So coming back to my clone brush, I can now sample the light area of the road again and continue to drag this over. All right, now that that looks good, I'll go ahead and bring the dark area of the road back in. As you're painting, be sure to try to avoid areas of repetition if you notice them. This is looking really good. Here's the before and the after of removing that yellow paint. It took some time, but I think that looks really nice. I want to show you one more technique that you can use with these tools. This time, we'll use the clone brush in a different way to remove this necklace. Before we use this new technique, let's see how much of the necklace we can remove by just using the in-painting brush. I'll go ahead and grab that. Then, using a small brush, I'll go ahead and paint over the necklace. This did a pretty good job, but these edges don't look perfect. We have a bit of bump going on right here, and then this corner looks a bit too sharp. To fix this, I have a great technique that's perfect for areas like this. I'll add a new pixel layer, and then I'll grab the clone brush tool. Using the clone brush, I'm going to sample a bit of the collar that we have right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and paint that anywhere. 
Now I'm going to use the move tool to move this layer that we just painted on. I'll rotate it and then place it over the area that we want to fix. Look how perfectly this fits. This looks really good. To make this blend in even better, I'm going to have this layer selected and then I'm going to use the Mesh Warp tool. I'm just going to click on these edges and I'm going to curve this collar a little bit more to make it bend naturally with the shirt. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'll press apply up in the context toolbar. Now we added this area, but it has a little bit of extra that we don't need. So I'm going to grab the eraser tool and I'm just going to erase what we don't need that we had sampled from originally. Here's the before and after of fixing up that neckline. I think I erased a little bit too much right there, so I'm going to press Command or Control Z. Then I'll be a little more careful as I erase this time. Here's the before and after, and I think that looks a lot better. After all of that work, you can see what we've done. Here's the before, and here's the after. Using these three techniques can really help you as you clean up your photos. If you want to learn more great techniques for photo editing, check out my free course in the video description. In the course, I'll show you 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.